today on the Retro Zoo Super Show. Live from Factory Brazil. So greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. You may have noticed, may have noticed that this episode is a little shorter than normal. Well, it's not actually going to be. So, you know, your podcast player is lying to you. Um, <laughs> no, in all, in all seriousness, this is, uh, I'm going to get into that in just a little bit. Um, we're going to try something a little bit different this time, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But before that, um, I am Kai. I'm one of your hosts today. We are right in the middle of a series. I should say right in the middle. We're kind of at the tail end of a series on, um, you know, kind of actually what it was intended to be tabletop role-playing games in general and has turned into a i mean uh, much more about dungeons and dragons in particular um but um we've been having some fun with that we are going to get back to that next week but the topic for today uh i'm sorry the next topic in that series was not quite prepared uh I, i've got to do a little bit more research and all and so we decided to fill that in with um, uh, an episode I've been doing research on for quite some time, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Um, before we do, uh, you know, I do want to invite you all. I'm, um, I am, I, I'm actually <laughs> pretty much clear of responsibilities in the next week, and so um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be finishing up the next song in the Mega Man series and that's going to be the march song um uh the from Mega Man 3 soundtrack if you don't know if you if you haven't been listening to the recent episodes for our Patreon page we are we are remixing re-recording a uh, a new new version of uh, a new cover of songs from Mega Man 3 and giving those to our page our patrons at any level and um and so even uh you know even just giving one dollar a month is going to get you these songs we are working on making this a full-length album and so you're going to be able to get those when they come out so uh, once a month they're supposed to come out i am going to be a little bit late on the march one but the good news is that without any uh, ridiculous responsibilities next week. I'm going to be able to finish up the one that we're working on and get well on our way on the April one. So the April one, we're actually hoping to be kind of, uh, maybe, maybe a little earlier in the month. And that will be very exciting because, um, yeah, um, I, it's, it's been one of those things. It's like, you know, with the, with the wedding plans and everything, it's, it's like, why did, why did we say that we were going to do this? Because, this is like a really crowded year. And when we were doing the Dyson Dreary soundtrack and um, it, it's, it, it's been one of those things like, yeah, I'm not sure that this was the best time to do this, but we are doing it and, and we're having a lot of fun. And the Mega Man 3 soundtrack is my favorite uh, NES soundtrack. And we've just had been having a blast doing it so far. And so we will be having these two new songs up here relatively soon. One should be in the first week of April. And then I'm hoping one a week or two after that. And so if um if you are not supporting us on on 
uh, Patreon already. It's patreon.com slash technofunkboy. You might check that out this year. Uh, normally, you know, the, the free music uh, level of our of you know of our of our patreon support is at the three dollar level but we decided to give everyone this this year and so uh please do support us if you are not able that's something we totally understand and um but but if you if you are enjoying our show please rate and review us please tell a friend so um with that being said um Let's get into our topic a little bit. So, uh, you know, for those who have been here a, a while, you know that occasionally we stick our toe into earthbound music. I was trying, you know, this is one of my favorite games. I, I, I've been trying to figure out kind of an original approach, or I was trying to figure out a more original approach to tackling this game instead of just talking about it because uh, it's one of those, it's one of those games that like every retro gaming podcast has to cover because it's earthbound. Um, and so I wanted, I wanted to do something a little bit, uh, a, you know, a little bit different angle. And so I decided, Hey, you know, there's a lot of just really incredible things that, um, that the composers, um, uh, of, of the game, um, uh, Kichi Suzaki, uh, Suzuki and Hip Tanaka, uh, do with the game and in the soundtrack. And so why don't we kind of tackle it like that? And so like, you know, every, every once in a while, when I finally get enough research Put together to put it together, you know, to do the episode, we we do one, you know, uh, one aspect of the music of the game. And so we did one on on one of the battle themes back in episode twenty four. In episode twenty eight, we did one on the Your Sanctuary music. So if you've played the game, you know what that you know what we're talking about there. Um, and then, and my personal favorite of this series has been episode forty one because in that one we talked about the Blues Brothers, and uh, and not even joking because. Um, the Runaway Five in the game is based on the Blues Brothers, and so we uh, we 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 talked about the Blues Brothers. We talked about the Runaway Five and how they, uh, you know, um, how their music was in the game, and uh, and went off of that. And that was that was a lot of fun. So now we're going to talk about sampling, uh, and this is kind of a big topic. And and I was thinking, it's like you know, okay, there's like several songs I want to tackle in this topic, and so. I, there's there's kind of I, I mean we could just do like a really long episode where we just put up segments of like okay you know now okay that song's done now we're gonna jump to this song it'll be it'll be very long and 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 you know uh, it'd be interesting but it's like well you know why don't we do it like this we're, what we're gonna do is we're going to do several mini episodes that combined will form this episode and and just uh and so you know they're they, you know they'll all be they'll all be the same episode and we're just going to go um you know uh, one one to another and uh, they'll be able to be you know, all, all fit together at the end but we're going to release them separately as many episodes and there's going to be several of them and they're all going to come out relatively quickly um and they will all be out before the next scheduled full episode, which will be a week from today on a Friday. And so, you know, your, your, your podcast catcher is going to be really full with techno, uh, with uh, retro zoo episodes this week and the next, in the, in this next coming week. But, um, but there is going to be a lot of fun. And so combined, you're going to get like an extra large episode just in smaller bites. And so without further ado, let's talk about sampling drum. If you don't mind, let's get this party going. So to really understand the way the Earthbound soundtrack works, what you have to understand is about sampling. So when it came to the Nintendo, the way set, the way music worked is that the the the, the processor produced this sound as as a, you know a computer generated wave and these were like square waves and triangle waves and the reason they were called square waves and triangle waves is because if you if you ha uh, looked at them in the wave form then you would actually see triangles or squares so that's a really original way of naming those but when we come to the super nintendo age it worked a little bit differently and for those of you who have worked with MIDI before, you're, this is going to seem very familiar to you because MIDI works in kind of the same way. What the composer does 
it's, it, it's you don't just you record like we would do, you know, like like on an album or some or soundtrack. We don't we don't just like record the song and put it as an MP3 or a WAV format on the on the cartridge because it wouldn't fit. That's too much memory being used there. And so what would what they would do instead is you had the this library of samples. And each sample was a different instrument, and this recorded sound was only one note. And then you told, the composer would tell the computer to modulate that note and lengthen it or shorten it and, and you know, do whatever you needed to with it, uh, you know, set the volume and all that. And so you only had recorded the one note, and that sample would be played at whatever pitch or anything that the composer needed. And so you would have that like this. Uh, all right. Now that's recorded. But what if I needed that as a G? Well, I would say, could tell the computer to like put that as a G. Uh. All right. That was cool. But what about a C? Okay. All right. Just tell it to play it as a C. Uh, and there we go. You could build rhythms off of this. You could just you tell you could tell the computer to play it this this often at this you know at this at this rate at you know at for this length on you know at this note this rhythm and kind of create a beat. And then now that you have that. You could actually put, set, you know, samples on top of each other and you could build, you know, a more lush harmony with it. Wait, that didn't work. Let's try this again. Harmony. harmony. Oh, that's much better. So this is kind of the way, this is the kind of way this worked. Now the Super Nintendo had like this base library of these, of these, of these uh, sounds of these samples. But it also had the capability of pulling a sample library off of the cartridge. And so in the program, you say like, okay, now we're going to use our samples on these. So play, you know, my sample a at this note at this length and, and it would do it. And so that loud games that were willing to put the time and money into building their own sample library, to have to to bring to bring to the game uh, a, a a a particular tone and a particular sound to the game that was in fact unique to the game, and so that's why when you're playing you know this game and they're playing strings and then you play that game and they they have strings but the strings don't sound the same. Well, one of them might be using a custom library, but despite this. You know, most composers, while they were trying to build a very high quality library that they could, that they could use to, to, to bring some more impact to the game, most of them were still using the same kinds of sounds and the same kind of approach. So the string sound might sound different, but they're both using strings. Until you get to Earthbound, where Suzuki and Tanaka really kind of delved deep and plumbed the depth of what you could do with the sample system and came up with some stuff that is very unique in the way it sounds and some things that are very illegal in the way it sounds. But we're going to get to that in just a little bit. First of all, I mean, this is something you're going to notice the, as soon as you get into Earthbound that even when a straightforward song is being played, and that doesn't happen all that often, but even when a straightforward JRPG song is being played, it doesn't sound the way, the way it, it would in any other game. And then you get into a battle or you get to a weird area of the game and you realize, oh, actually none of this sounds the way that any other game would be playing it. They had to, they had to actually put an extra chip into the cartridge just to hold 
the 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 sample library because the 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 the, the, the tones that they were drawing into this game to kind of weave this tapestry of the soundtrack together was so extensive and some of the samples quite a bit longer than was normal that they had to add memory in just just to handle the music and so some of the, so they they do this they use these things in in a couple of different ways first of all they they use they use these sounds to get our attention. They, they might, they might take something that is unexpected and, and especially the way they present it is unexpected. The sound you're hearing is unexpected. Um, and even though it might be kind of a straightforward tune, it's not what you thought you were going to hear from a super Nintendo game. And when they do this, they're, it's, it's like they're, they're, you know, audibly shaking you going, you know, Hey, Hey, you need to pay attention here. And it works. We're going to deal with one of those songs here in a minute. And sometimes they, they would, they're going to grab something that is familiar. That is something that we might, we might recognize. And normally when they do that, they're going to twist it a little bit. They're going to, they're going to make it so that it's not, not quite, not quite presented in the way that we thought it should be. And in that instance, a lot of what they're doing is, is, you know, going along with one of the themes of the game is that, you know, underneath this kind of idyllic, you know, kind of fifties esque, setting you know something something is being twisted something is being eroded some something's actually being corrupted and the music actually reflects this and in so we see we hear this in a lot of the tunes that we get into and so with that kind of as an introduction we're going to move on to our next section which is starting to listen to the songs themselves and like you know like when uh, like when the composers throw some kind of some kind of sound at you that you weren't expecting some kind of um uh, you know sample at you that you you were not used to hearing in in video games um, it's going to help to pay attention. I'm going to draw out some stuff that's going on in these that, um, that you're, you're going, you're going to be, you're going to want to, you're going to want to hear. And with that, we're going to conclude our introduction here and move right in to part one. And remember, you know, this, this episode is going to be released in separate parts. And so your, if you, if you haven't downloaded part one yet, or if it hasn't come out yet, your podcast catcher is just going to go silent right now. <laughs> 